Hey, it's Kathy. So by now we've all heard that Daniel Lee is leaving Bottega Veneta. I made this video because in addition to wanting to talk a little bit about the tea, I want to talk about the list of things that people should buy before the Daniel Lee era of Bottega Veneta has been ushered out. We all know what happened when Phoebe Philo left Celine. Prices on the old Celine items skyrocketed once the new designer came in. We're not making that mistake this time. Let's get started. The announcement that Daniel Lee was going to leave Bottega Veneta caught us all off guard. So on November 10th, the day it happened, a friend sent me a story on Instagram. I read the statement that said Bottega Veneta and Daniel Lee had come to the joint decision to end their collaboration. I remember reading this statement and thinking like, what exactly do they mean? It took me at least a good three minutes to understand that Daniel Lee was leaving. When most designers leave, there's usually rumors of like people are unhappy or the, the sales are going down. None of that happened. Once this happened, fashion Instagram Instagram was a buzz. Everybody's been trying to dig up the tea. When I read the announcement, I thought somebody either got fired or somebody quit because it was so abrupt. So the only thing that I've really heard is that he had a revolving door on his design team. I'm filming this November 13th, so who knows? We might hear something later on. So if, if something else comes up, I will, I'm sure we'll definitely talk about it in the comments. I'm one of those people that I had heard of Bottega Veneta before Daniel Lee came in. I'll say before 2019, I never thought I was gonna own a Bottega Veneta piece. The old Bottega Veneta to me conjured up images of brown intricado leather. The intricado leather is that weave pattern that they're known for. I don't even think my mother would buy that. But it was definitely elegant and beautiful. They lack the statement pieces that I tend to purchase. Let me know in the comments if you're one of those people that never heard of Bottega Veneta before Daniel Lee. So Daniel Lee had his first fashion show in April of 2019, I believe. And once I started seeing the designs on Instagram, I was definitely a Bottega Veneta convert. It seems like Daniel Lee spent three years at Bottega Veneta. And I, that seems to be the term that a lot of designers are spending at labels that aren't their own brand. It happened with YSL and Heidi Silvan. Heidi Silvan is now at Celine and we don't know how long that's gonna last. So three years at a, at a design house seems to be the norm right now. Once I got over the initial shock of him leaving, the next thing I thought of was, ooh, I need to go buy the things on my wish list because these things are gonna go up. If you've seen my other wish list video, I talk about this one Celine necklace that I really, really wanted. It was a necklace from Phoebe Philo's last collection with Celine. And it was like $350. This necklace is now selling for $1,000, which to me is ridiculous. But a lot of the old Celine items that come from the Phoebe Philo era are very, very expensive now. And a lot of people, myself included, for the old Celine item versus the newer Celine item. It is what it is. Daniel Lee just showed a collection in Detroit, I think last month. I've heard bad reviews about it. Who knows if that played any role in it? That being said, we do not know who the new designer is. We do not know the new direction. We don't know if any of the items that we like are gonna stay. So for most people, they're gonna go out and buy things because even though I think a bag like the pouch bag is iconic and it's something that I think that Bottega Veneta will keep, you never know. So I've had a wish list of Bottega Veneta items that I wanted to buy and this has kind of made me just firm that up. I broke it up into categories. The first category, of course, is shoes. So the first shoe that's up been on my wish list consistently for the past like year and a half are the stretch sandals. Now I know you're gonna say, okay, Kathy, which stretch sandals? You go to Bottega website, there's like three pairs of stretch sandals. They're the stretch sandals that look like these. So I have these dupes. If you've seen many other of my other videos, I've worn these out. I have tons of pictures of them. I need to go back to the store and try these on though because I remember when I tried these on, I needed my regular size, but a lot of people are saying you should go up a size. I know a lot of people are like, I don't like this square heel. I do feel like this stretch sandal style is it's gonna be a classic. Having these dupes and the lockdown had kept me from buying them, but I guess Daniel Lee leaving and these dupes being at their failure point is my sign. When I first wanted them, they were like 760. They are now 890. I have seen a pair on Poshmark that I may pick up, but I do have to go to the store and confirm my size. So the next shoe that's on my list are the stretch mule. This is another square toed design. I feel like either you're gonna love the mule or you're gonna love the stretch sandal. I'm personally gonna get more wear out of the stretch sandal, so that's what I'm gonna buy. But if you like a nice mule, this one I think is a timeless. This was actually more popular than the stretch sandal when it came out. And I feel like this is one of those shoes where even if you buy it and you just kind of hold it, it's gonna come back. It's not one of those shoes, in my opinion, that's gonna be, look super dated. And the price is better. The stretch sandal has gained in popularity, so it's $8.90. These only cost $7.90. I know I, I said only, but you know, that extra $100 does help. They come in a lot of really nice colors. Currently, I think the website only has like black and lavender and pink. I especially love it when they, they have it in that blue color. That to me is like super springtime, super fresh. But this is one of the shoes that I think will be a classic style. For so the third shoe that I think will actually be a classic for them is the Lidl Pump. Now I own one, so I may be a little biased. I love this shoe. The reason I know I'm gonna buy more Bottega Veneta shoes are just the quality of these shoes. Now I will say I've not worn these as much as I would like to just because I'm wearing out those stretch sandals. <laughs> 
The one thing I love about Bottega Veneta, like shoes, high heels, pumps, whatever, is this grip on the bottom. But the craftsmanship is gorgeous. The shoe is gorgeous. If you don't like this kitten heel, which I understand, they do have a flat version, which I also think would be a good buy if you're interested in that. Because I haven't worn these as much as, I, as I've worn the stretch sandals, there is a part of me that's wondering, should I sell these little pumps and get the stretch sandals? It's a game time decision, but if I were to sell these, I could probably almost get the same price as these shoes because these, these shoes actually, I think are selling for a thousand dollars now and I've been seeing them reselling for about eight nine hundred dollars I think I could do an even exchange when I do it I know I don't wear these I know I want the stretch sandals and <laughs> these may be gone soon but if you're interested in either one of them I do think that these are going to be classic styles that you want in your collection let me know which shoe you think I should buy so next up on my wish list are boots if you like Bottega Veneta boots you either love the tire boot or you love the lug boot I am team tire boot so at the time I wasn't sure if I liked this style but I ended up buying this Zara dupe that I really really enjoy I bought it at the end of winter last year these Zara dupes I worn like three times and I feel like they have like two wears in them so <laughs> it's time for me to splurge on them. I want the black and red pair of, of tire boots. If you've seen any other tire boots the ones that have color have like this swirl at the bottom. All of them except the red pair. At first I was going to buy the red pair that I saw in the store but I was out at the shopping one day and I saw somebody with the red tire boots and the whole squirrel section was red. So I've been on the hunt for these on the lookout. I don't know if these are dupes somewhere or they were the first one. This is a question I'm going to ask when I go to the Bottega Veneta boutique to try on the other shoes. I don't want to buy the ones that look like this if the ones with the swirl exist. If you've seen my coat videos, I have a couple of red coats. Red is a color that I wear very often, whether it's with, with my jackets or even in sneakers and clothes. So I would think I would get a lot of use out of it. The only other color I thought about getting was like a kiwi seagrass, but I have kiwi items and the seagrass to me is a little bit different. Because of the tone being different, I don't want the seagrass version, even though it does have the wavy thing that I like. I'm just being really picky in this situation. I want the red. I feel like the red for me is going to be a little bit more timeless, a little bit more classic, go with more items and that's it. But I am loving how everybody's style and the seagrass version of the tire boots online. Give me a thumbs up if you're liking my wish list. So the second pair of boots that I want from Bottega Veneta are the puddle boots. I know they're ugly. They are very, very ugly. Don't have to leave me a comment. I already know. For some reason, I'm obsessed with these shoes. So I live in Chicago, which it snows, it rains, whatever. I feel like these shoes I could wear, get a lot of use out of and not really care if like anything's gonna happen to leather because they are like plastic polyurethane type boots. The tire boots are actually made of leather. I know they're gonna be treated. I know they're durable, but I think on days where there's snow and salt on the ground, I'd be less inclined to wear my thousand dollar tire boots outside. But these puddle boots feel like they're indestructible. I can be outside shoveling snow and I don't care. Okay, I, I know I won't shovel snow in them, but that's neither here nor there. I feel like these are, we probably get more wear out of just because I feel like they're, I can throw these around and they're not gonna be, get destroyed. In addition, the price point is good. So the puddle boots currently are $650. I remember before I liked them, Kiwi Color ones came on guilt and they were on sale for like four something. And I hemmed and hawed and then when I was like, okay, I do want them, they sold out of my size and they have not been there yet. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that things come to guilt before they go to the outlets. I am fearful that, that Bottega Veneta is gonna raise prices before the Daniel Lee inventory sells out. This is definitely a watch and wait and see type of situation. The puddle boot is on my list. Most of the other boots that I've been seeing on the Bottega website are just either very trendy or they're just ugly. Let's talk about the lug boot. It's not on my wish list. I will say that the lug boot is a gorgeous boot. I think the tire boot is a little bit more of a Chelsea style boot, which is a little bit more dressy, but edgy. I actually had a friend ask me yesterday, what did I think about the lug boots? I do feel like they are classic. The thing about the lug boots is they come in really, really cute colors. The ones that my friend wanted were a chalk color with like black, gorgeous they have a couple of bags in this chalk color so it'd be beautiful if you're into anything that's off-white these bags are going to be a gorgeous I think they would also look good paired with things that are black it also would look really good in my opinion with like very neutral tone you can't go wrong with the tire boot or the lug boot let me know in the comments if you which one you prefer so I think the bags are the number one thing that most people are going to buy before the Daniel Lee era is up. If somebody were to ask me what is one item that exemplifies the Daniel Lee era of Bottega Veneta, it's the pouch bag. <laughs> I feel like this, this bag made a lot of influencers rich. This is a first generation pouch bag in the color camel or camello, whatever's on the website. It's currently been replaced by a color called teak. I actually prefer this color because I feel like it has a little bit more warmth. This color is a little bit more buttery caramel color. Sorry if you have the teak, but yeah, the color the color to me is a little bit dirtier than this one. This bag looks like the Werther's original butter candy. So one of my friends pointed out to me that she doesn't see me wearing this bag as much. I've worn the bag with this suit and like with leopard. Although I love this bag, I'm now realizing I'm a statement bag person. Not to say that it has to be like loud or gaudy because I have a Chanel bag that I carry almost every day. It's like black and white, but that black and white with the pop of a 24 karat gold it just makes a statement this bag is beautiful it's basic 
irony of life is when the Daniel Lee news broke, I was telling a friend the, the Bottega Veneto pouch that I really, really want is the zebra one. The first time I saw the zebra one was on Melissa's wardrobe's Instagram account and I loved it. And I remember searching for it, sold out. I told my friend, if I could ever get my hands on the zebra version, I would sell this one and get the zebra. The universe heard me because now you are able to pre-order the zebra version of this bag. Me and this bag may be breaking up. So the zebra version is almost $3,000. I paid about $1,700 for this one. From what I've seen on like StockX and other sites, I could probably get at least $2,000 for this. I am going to pre-order the zebra version and I'm, I definitely am going to end up selling this one. I've really been looking at the Fendi First bag, which is a similar clutch to this, but it also has the option for like a strap. And they have this chain strap that's like an additional thing gorgeous love it want it buy it so that's, that's what i think i'm gonna do because although i love this bag it's lacking some bit of pizzazz the zebra version is gorgeous yes it does look like you have a zebra's butt like underneath your arms i don't know what to say i'm okay with that the pouch is iconic i don't want to pay full retail price for the zebra but i've been looking for the zebra version for forever and luckily bottega veneta realized like nobody's selling there so we can definitely make money selling more so that's what they've done if there's a color of pouch bag that you're interested in and you are a pouch person you're not going to go wrong i actually think the price of these are going to go up you don't know what items bottega veneta is going to keep and what they're going to get rid of when daniel lee is gone i do think the pouch is going to stay but if there's a pouch in a color or a weave or something that you feel like is special to you why not i love the pouch i feel like it is the singular most daniel lee bottega veneta item if you want to own a piece of daniel lee's legacy at bottega veneta get the pouch if you see many of my other videos you know i have this kiwi color chain cassette bag this bag i love it although it's a very statement bright statement bag it's very neutral so i bought this bag on guilt for like 3200 at the time the bags were selling for about 3600 they're now 4100 dollars on the Bottega Veneta website i always I get asked the question of do i think this bag is going to be a classic i think this bag is going to be a classic for me because i love a good statement bag i was going to get in the chalk color but i ended up getting this color and like that i've been very very happy this bag goes with a lot of things already in my closet i often use it neutral if you're looking for a quote-unquote classic bag you might just be happy with getting the regular cassette bag the cassette bag is a little too basic for me but i think for a lot of people it's a great utilitarian bag the weave makes it special so the chain cassette bag has more of a puffy weave where the, the cassette bag has more of a flatter weave and so that makes it a little bit different i believe that the capacity of the cassette bag is actually a little bit larger than the capacity of the chain cassette bag if that's a factor for you do it i'm not getting rid of this bag i may sell the brown pouch i'm very happy with this color i have no regrets about this color i don't even want the chalk bag bag anymore just because I already know I got the showstopper at home. If you see this bag and the color you want at a price you want to pay, I say get it. The pouch definitely says Daniel Lee, Bottega Veneta. This bag is just a statement. Most people who see this bag don't even know what brand it is. If you want a bag that's less ubiquitous as the pouch, then this is this would be a good bag to get. That's my opinion. Let me know what you think. The last bag I think that people should buy is the Jody. My understanding was that the Jody was part of the original Bottega Veneta lineup for Daniel Lee came. I believe he added the mini Jody and one other size. The larger one I definitely know was there before him. I love that bag on certain bodies. Even though I'm not a plus size person, I am a curvy person. I have too much flesh to try to put that little bag in the crook of my arm. I feel like every influencer I follow has a mini Jody. I find that I like the, that bag on people who are like tall and willowy or people who are petite. It's a cute, cute bag. If I had the right proportions, I would get a mini Jody. The mini Jody to me screams Daniel Lee era where the other sizes of the Jody bags, they could have been before Daniel Lee. If you want a piece of the Daniel Lee era, the Daniel Lee history, then the mini Jody is where I think you should get. Let me know if you have one or if you're interested in the mini Jody. So those are all the items in my Bottega Veneta wish list. Although I'm very sad that Daniel Lee's leaving, I feel like we're gonna go out with the bangs. Let me know in the comments if I missed something that's on your Bottega Veneta wish list. All right, <laughs> see you next time. Bye.